This is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here on Co-Creators Global Village for World Unity Week 2022. And I am so proud to introduce you to one of my most favorite people in the whole world, Dr. Pamela Girali, who is a brilliant um, healer and transformational leader because she has personally gone through a process which she brought in called the blueprint for the human spirit. And her experience, she was a, a nurse and then she ran um, large nonprofits and then had these awakening <laughs> experiences that transformed her. So today she's going to be talking um, in our love is the way about that and using um, the, her her way of connecting love with the blueprint for the human spirit. Correct? Yes. yes. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Kathy. And for everyone with us today and whenever it is just uh, such a blessing to be a part of um, World Unity Week and to be a part of everything that is happening today because we truly are here to make a difference. So what a blessing. Thank you. Yes. So the love wave is um, about to start in your corner. Do you um, do you have your slides set up or do you want to chat for a little bit first? Let me or? just... Um, chat for a minute okay. and then I'll, I'll try to get those started without too much uh, no problem. challenge. But I truly am grateful to be here and to be a part of this group. And Kathy, thank you. I have been working with Kathy for a couple of years now and uh, she helped me with my latest book and to uh, advance my life work. I'd been trying to do it by myself and I realized that I could do far more if I had help. And Kathy has just been amazing in that process. So thank you, my dear friend. And to um, Noelle and Bob, thank you for being continuing with the work of Barbara Marks Hubbard and for bringing us together on various uh, on Thursday nights, etc. So thank you also and to everybody who is a part of this amazing week and who is committed to making a positive difference in their own lives and in the lives of others. It's been uh, it's just really a blessing to be a part of this. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are born to love, born as love even, and how love is a theme throughout the blueprint for the human spirit. So I'm going to pull up my slides here so we can, <clears throat> I guess I need to uh, screen share first. <laughs> oh, do you have me on Kathy to screen share? Let's make sure. Yes, uh, now you for sure I do. Now I can. Okay. Well, you're on and I'm not. Wait so you're n I'm not on. Okay, hang on here. Just one moment, please. Oh, gosh. <laughs> It's so much fun, technology. What would we ever do without it? <laughs> and then, of course, what do we do with it? So um, hang on here one more time, and I think it'll work. Screen share. There we are. I'm your backup if you need me. Yes, I got you. Thank you. So let us 
go to um, slide show <laughs> from the beginning and let me increase. there we go. All right. Well, thank you for being patient. And certainly we are born to love. Love is what we are. And love is why we're here. Love is how we relate with everyone and with all creation. Love is how we evolve here. And certainly that is our one reason for being. And love is how we heal. So certainly love is all there is. <clears throat> And I'd like to read a quote by um, Joan Borisinko in her book, Seven Paths to God. She explains that a mystic sees beyond the illusion of separateness into the intricate web of life in which all things are expressions of a single whole. You can call this web God, the Tao, the Great Spirit, the Infinite Mystery, Mother or Father, but it can only be known as love. And certainly that is what our focus is today and in uh, this part of uh, World Unity Week. So we're very excited to be a part of that. Before I talk about love, I wanna share a little bit about the blueprint for the human spirit. I was raised in a very conservative Christian home and there wasn't a lot of love <laughs> um, because it was extremely um, fear based. And I called it the unholy trinity of guilt, shame and fear. When I was raised in that environment, it was very limiting and very narrow, but I pursued a career in nursing and public health. I had many amazing leadership opportunities and it wasn't until uh, I went to a leadership conference at the Center for Creative Leadership in Greensboro, North Carolina, when I had the opportunity to focus on me. I had never done that before, and I had to do all these self-assessment tests, and I had to have family and friends and peers and subordinates all answered questions about me. And so when we were there, we learned a lot about ourselves. And there were some things I discovered that I didn't really like about myself. I was kind of pushy in the workplace. And certainly I'm a softer, kinder person today, but I was a real, you know, I was really driven. And in that conference, I did journaling and visioning for the first time. And it was life changing. That was when my life took a different path. I went back to work and realized that my job was no longer compatible with my new vision and I left. I just walked away from my career. Fortunately, I had gotten married. I didn't have to worry about paying the bills. However, <laughs> I did learn so much and I became a spiritual junkie. I, I was a seeker so committed to uh, discovering something that had been missing in my life. And in the process, I read every book I could get my hands on and I went to every workshop and expo. I think I, it's a common story among those of us who have uh, made a commitment to our own personal development and transformation. But every book I read and every person I listened to, masters from the past and present, I was concerned and fearful that I would be led down the wrong path. But I still listened and opened my heart to attempt to make some progress in my life. Well, eventually, after a couple of years, I would be awakened in the middle of the morning, 3.30, it seems to be a common time when the skies are clear, and information started flowing into me. It was interesting and unusual. It started with a simple mind-body-spirit triangle, and then it kept evolving and growing along with a kind of a chart. And eventually, within six months, 
of having these divine downloads three or four days a week for uh, six months, I had the blueprint for the human spirit unfolded in my life and it guided my personal growth because it grew in harmony with my own understandings and with my experiences. And this is what the blueprint looks like, the very most basic parts of the blueprint look like in um, its chart form. There were five dimensions, physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, and spiritual. And there are five fields of existence, the quantum or energy, personal, social, global, and eternal. So there's 25 boxes in my uh, matrix at the moment. But what is so beautiful about this, it is about our inner landscape. It took all the pieces from little things that I had learned from so many different people and put them together in this beautiful format, this beautiful matrix, the blueprint for the human spirit. It reads like the anatomy and physiology of the, the human spirit. And it is a mystical and metaphysical guide for conscious, compassionate living. It also is compatible with ancient teachings and new science, Eastern philosophy and Western psychology. So it's relevant for students of all walks of life and all belief systems. So this holistic guide is also so helpful for self-discovery and authentic personal living. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the blueprint, because I'm not going to talk more about that in a whole as a whole, but I will allude to it in uh, as we continue. But there is on my website on the home page a free booklet that you can download. It's called a blueprint for conscious, compassionate living, and it gives you a little more information about the blueprint and about how it evolved and how it impacted me. In fact, um, <clears throat> there were many ways that the blueprint was helpful to me. And one was I quit struggling and striving to be something that I already was. I think that is one of the key things that we learn on our path to becoming more aware that it isn't so much that we have to fix ourselves or change ourselves, but we have to awaken to our essential nature. Also, there was a huge shift in my understanding from being separate to knowing oneness with all that is. I released a lot of fears and addictions and attachments, healed wounds from the past, and certainly that is something that would benefit us all because when we talk about intergenerational wounds, you know, they keep going. But when we heal, we heal not only the past, but we also heal the future. And so I think that is what the previous presentation uh, talked a little bit about. Another th benefit was that I learned why I'm here and how I can share the gifts that I have received with the world. And it helped me to align my thinking, my actions, my attitudes, my emotions, all in harmony with the essence of my being. And when we're not in alignment, we know how stressful that can be. So another thing is that we can tap in to our divine abundant inheritance of the, all the things that are available to us when we awaken to that and to our essential nature and discover our superpowers as well. We won't talk about superpowers, but certainly another time we can. So the blueprint helped me realize that love is what I am. And when we discover our divine blueprint, certainly according to the blueprint for the human spirit, there are five primary aspects of life. 
the physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, and spiritual. And certainly the physical body is something that we have to uh, take care of. It is our primary um, challenge perhaps as an adult so that we are strong and energized enough for us to live purposefully and to serve in whatever capacity that we have been chosen to serve. And so that's one thing that we do. Certainly from a mental perspective, we want to understand more and learn and grow and expand our minds. And certainly it's not just about the brain, but because every cell in our bodies do have intelligence, but it is certainly uh, a major aspect of life and something that I learned uh, over the years that I needed to go beyond the mental aspect of life if I was going to really embrace all these aspects of life. I had been extremely scientifically trained and I was very rational and logical and skeptical about things. And throughout my awakening process, I discovered so many other ways and there's so much more than just to think and know things because that certainly does limit us. The heart or the emotional part of our being requires that we accept and love ourselves. And the heart is, is a powerful part of our lives. It, from the physical, it starts beating about five weeks, but it represents this whole other aspect of our lives, the emotional component, our ability to relate and, and feel things and experience things. The intuition is another aspect where we can use our intention and choose our direction because that's one of our powers. It's how we learn how to move forward and how we make choices and decisions that are in harmony with the truth of our being. The soul, of course, the sum total integrated part of us that strives to be in balance so that we can live authentically and we can certainly uh, be true to the essence of our being. So when we are in alignment, certainly we are living authentically and using our creative potential for the highest good. The other thing that I learned about life in general through all of this process is that the essence of our nature is love. We were created in the image and likeness of God, source, creator, and of course, we know that God is love, which means we are too. So the key here is to love and nourish ourselves. It is the first responsibility that we have, and it helps if we follow the wisdom of the heart. The heart first pumps oxygenated blood to itself before it pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So if we, it's like the airline attendants tell us to put our oxygen mask on first, but I like the wisdom of the heart. Certainly, when we learn how to take good care of ourselves, we are more capable of showing up as love and making a difference here on planet Earth during our lifetime. Love is also why we are here. We are here to serve and to discover our unique talents and our unique abilities and enhance them so that we can more fully share that love with the world. We're here to make a difference, to uplift humanity in our own unique way. And certainly there are many ways that we can do that. But the blueprint has five fields of existence, the quantum, personal, social, global, and eternal. And each one of those has aspects of love. The quantum or energy, certainly um, love is an energy that we 
are that we can express, that we can share, that we can easily give. On a personal level, we focus inward and love ourselves because after all, if we don't love ourselves, then, then who will? In fact, there's a quote by Buddha that says, you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So we always start inside. In fact, most of my work focuses on us. And certainly I help organizations and groups in with leadership um, challenges and possibilities. But I believe that first, we have to work on ourselves. That is why we are here. On the social realm, we share our love through acts of kindness and through a variety of ways by caring for our children, by nurturing them, by being healthcare workers or other caregivers, as teachers and as uh, mentors. We share love as part of our family unit with friends, and we certainly also um, share it in the workplace as we, as leaders, empower and motivate and encourage our employees or peers or whomever to express themselves more to share their gifts more and certainly on a global level we have an opportunity to share the love that we are by making a difference through creative expressions as we share art and music new knowledge and technology we make a difference. We leave a legacy of love for future generations as we bring forth the gifts that we have and share them in very positive ways. On the eternal realm, of course, we share love because that's what we are. That is the essence of our being through conscious ways. The heart math energy field shows how we relate with others as love. And certainly our energy field extends far beyond this physical body, at least six feet in all directions. And that's a powerful force. In fact, the heart energy is estimated to be at least 60 times more powerful than brain energy. So if you really want to make a positive impact on the world, use your heart more than your brain. <laughs> and um, certainly I have had to learn how to do that because initially I was very closed off. But certainly as I have had a chance to learn and grow and share my talents and share the blueprint with others, I have discovered exactly the potential that we have as loving kindred hearts out there in our communities, in our home and uh, in the workplace. The key, of course, is to love and bless others and all creation, because every time we just show up, no matter where we are, because our energy field extends so far, we are touching people and making a difference. So when we do that consciously, that intensifies our impact. In fact, if we just did random acts of kindness once in a while you know something would happen but with conscious continuous acts of compassion we truly can make a huge difference in the world well we do learn from love and 
I would like to share a, a poem with you. My parents were married almost 60 years before my father passed. My mother is still living and she stays with us for six months out of the year. So it is um, a blessing to have her with us. She has dementia, but she's still pretty independent at this time. So we're very blessed to have time with her right now. But when my father and she were married for 50 years, we had a big celebration. And I wrote this poem for them that I'd like to share. A love for all seasons. Fresh as spring rain, your love awakens me. Warm as summer breeze, your love embraces me. Radiant as fall leaves, your love excites me. Soft as winter snow, your love comforts me. Seasons come and go, your love sustains me. So that was a poem that I shared with my parents and with others who attended our big celebration. But love is certainly how we learn and it is such a blessing in our lives. Fortunately for me, I met a man who adores me <laughs> and supports me. And I know that it was because of our relationship and that my heart opened when I was first with him that I became open enough to receive the blueprint. And for that, I am so grateful. The universe smiled on me and gave me this amazing man as a partner in my life. And so I truly am grateful. And I know that um, it made all the difference in the world for me. In fact, <clears throat> one day I was feeling quite smug about having nailed my sacred mission and knowing why I was here to share the blueprint for the human spirit with the world. And so I said to him, well, do you know why you're here? You know, what's your higher purpose? And to be honest with you, I didn't expect much because my husband was retired and was hitting a little white ball around. But I said to him, you know, why are you here? And without any hesitation, he said, well, I am here to help you and support you so you can fulfill your higher mission. And I thought, wow, what a blessing. I am so overwhelmed by that and by the love that he shares with me and for me. He doesn't hesitate to um, help me in whatever way he can. So I feel truly blessed. And certainly when we open ourselves to love, we never know what will happen, but it will always be amazing and it will always be good. Now, there was one other thing that happened to me that made a huge impact on my life and my understanding of the blueprint. I was meditating one morning. This was about six years after I had received the blueprint. And I was on my lanai just very quickly went into another dimension. And in an hour and a half, I experienced 15 past lives. I mean, I experienced a dramatic event that rocked me in 15 past lives. There were men, women, and children from all walks of life and they span the ages from ancient Mayan times to more recent 1900s. And I didn't even realize how many there were until I came in after an hour and a half and wrote real quickly in my journal a couple of lines about each one so that I wouldn't forget them. And it was a Sunday, so I went to church and my friend said to me, what happened to you? Because I was so impacted by this experience, I couldn't hardly speak. 
or move or do anything. And she said, go home and write everything down that you can. So I spent eight hours and I recorded everything that I remembered about each of those people and how I felt about it. And in the process, I realized that they all reflected an aspect of my life today. And they all reflected a core shift in consciousness. Some of them were victims, horribly abused. Some of them tried hard with ego effort and failed. Some of them got it and lived consciously and compassionately and shared their gifts with others. Well, I was so touched by this and so overwhelmed. I visited with a friend who had, um, who was a therapist and she asked me if I would like to do a regression after I told her about this. And I was thinking, are you kidding? <laughs> I have just spent all this time and I have all these people. I'm never gonna, you know, oh, but what's one more? One more isn't gonna make any difference. So I let her guide me back in time. And I was a child at the feet of Jesus when he said, let the children come to me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in that moment, I knew what that meant. In my past, I was beat up with religion and I almost threw the baby Jesus and everything else out with the bathwater. But now I had a whole new understanding. I had come full circle and was able to understand the teachings in a whole new light. And from this moment on, the blueprint was no longer just an interesting intellectual exercise because I experienced it. It came to life. I integrated it into my way of being. It all came together in this beautiful experience with archetypes or past lives that reflected the core shifts in consciousness that I had made or was making so that my life was more in alignment with the truth of my being. So this was something that really shifted. I shifted from head to heart and soul. And that was a huge gift for which I am also eternally grateful. <clears throat> well, the blueprint also has what I call circles of consciousness and circles of life and wisdom and love and power and light. And since we're talking about love today, we'll talk a little bit about the blueprints circle of love because love is abundant. And when we are in harmony with the entire universe when we are sharing love and receiving love in, in a beautiful symbiotic way, then there is a synergy that comes into play. On a personal level, we first must love and accept ourselves. And then on a social level, share the love that we are through loving kindnesses and, and support and services. And on a global level, appreciate and accept everyone for being a part of the whole because we are all beloved children of God. And when all of those parts come into play, then we tr truly know the impact of love because there is this synergistic effect. And it almost takes us to a point where we make a leap of love into another dimension and know the full impact of love and recognize ourselves as love. So there is this beautiful way that we can interact, we can give and receive love from others, make that leap and certainly understand and know all the power and the benefits of divine infinite love. So that is one of the interesting ways that the blueprint reflects how there's synergy in this particular uh, model for conscious, compassionate living. 
Now, when love is missing in our lives, it's usually leaves us in a state of fear and fear all stems from duality or separation. When we believe that we are separate from others, from God, or from um, being one with all creation, then we fear in a variety of ways. And according to the blueprint wisdom, it is based on the different dimensions. So we fear in the physical, death, pain, and lack. In the mental, we feel fear betrayal and criticism. Emotionally, we fear rejection and to be disrespected. Intuitionally, our fear is about doubt and despair when we can't embrace our dreams. Uh, in the spiritual realm, it's a sense of unworthiness or inadequacy. And there are others, but this is how uh, what separation does to us and how it makes us feel and how we uh, fear so many different things in the process. Well, as a child, of course, my life was full of fear because I was told that I was an unworthy sinner and believed because I could never be good enough that I would never make it inside the pearly gates. Of course, I have a whole different perspective today, but it took a long time for me to eliminate that unholy trinity of guilt, shame, and fears. Many years of struggling and Eventually, though, I think we get to a point where we know oneness. We don't try to make connections with, but we just know that we are already one with everyone and all that is. So when we do that, when we recognize that, then all our fears pretty much dissipate. Now, there are times when things happen in the world and we go back to reacting in old patterns, but we can catch ourselves much more quickly and shift how we respond and shift how we react so that we are brought back into alignment with love, with the truth of our being. So we are not separate. And uh, fortunately, there are ways to overcome fear. And of course, that is with love. It's how we heal. The blueprint showed me through experience and and through uh, my divine downloads how this process tracks when we make a conscious choice, we can overcome fear from separation. And we can shift how we respond and react in certain situations, which we do because when there's a fear in our life, we become attached to different things to compensate for that. And we become addicted to different things. You know, some of us have been addicted to food or addicted to uh, kudos or many other things that are uh, help us feel better. But the truth is, over time, with life experiences, we learn our lessons, we learn through how we can use intention and practices to shift our responses and our reactions and bring our behaviors and our beliefs and our feelings into alignment with the truth of our being with oneness and with love so there is this whole process that we can go through but we don't have to strive and struggle and strain, which is what I did for many, many years. Instead of trying to uh, fix ourselves, we only need to awaken to the truth of our being. And when we realize that, certainly there is power in there and we can make instantaneous shifts. Now, I think those are very few and far between because we usually need to do our our homework but there is a way to just open our eyes to step aside to be the observer and to see truth instead of struggling and striving 
we can get off the spiritual treadmill and embrace the truth of our being. So that is the, the key. There are other ways that we can heal as well. And as I was receiving the blueprint for the human spirit, I also discovered something truly amazing. I realized that I was intuitive. I had no idea, but this whole way of healing came to me. I'm clairsentious, I feel things. And so I would be able to uh, be with another person and close my eyes and become like a mirror and feel exactly what was happening to this person. It could have been something that was physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, or spiritual, or it could have been uh, from the past, from a distant past life, or even from the future. Um, and my body just goes into motion because I act out uh, dramatically what I'm sensing and they can see it and feel it and participate in this process and typically we always receive guidance on how to shift our perception because perception is usually what the problem is it's how we view things and with these intuitive healings we get clarity not on the symptoms as they are expressed but on the root cause of the problems. So this form of healing has been such a blessing that I am so thrilled to share with others. And certainly if you'd like to learn more about it, on my website, drpamelagirali.com under spiritual blueprinting, you can learn more about that. I offer those. And certainly now we do them by Zoom or in person again, but, um, this has been a huge gift and something that I am most grateful to share. Well, healing also comes in other ways. And not long ago, I was down with um, viral thyroiditis. I was flatlined for almost um, six months and I couldn't do anything. I had no energy. My heart was affected because my uh, thyroid levels were elevated. But I just allowed myself that time to heal. And when I was better, I realized I was ready to go back to work. And so I asked the higher powers that be what they wanted me to focus on first. And I thought that it would be one of the things that I had started but not completed. But I was told to get up early an hour early, go to my office and to journal confessions for 40 days. I had no idea why. I had been a spiritual teacher for quite some time and I thought, oh my goodness, really? But, and I didn't know why 40. But when I did a little research, I realized that 40 is the number of rebirth. And then you can think about some of the stories about the 40 day flood and about uh, 40 years in the wilderness and I mean all these stories that have 40 in it and of course uh, human gestation is 40 weeks so there's a lot of significance with 40. Well I still didn't know what or why or how but I went to my office and I lit a candle and I sat there and all of a sudden it was like I had this word, discipline. I thought, excuse me, I can't stand the thought of anybody disciplining me or telling me what to do or what not to do. My life as a child was very rigid and I was disciplined quite harshly. And so me and discipline just didn't get along. But as I wrote my confession and I wrote about my life experiences, I realized that as I internalized discipline, it became self-discipline. And I could say no to one thing so I could say yes to something else. And in the process, then discipline is transformed into direction. Wow, I was, this was cool. And I could see how my life and how I had learned the next day, scattered. And I thought, 
oh, really? You know, I could have a hard time staying focused because I'm a creative spirit and I'm always a little hyper and out there. But every day for 40 days, I experienced these things, a word a day. And I let go of so much more garbage and baggage in my life that I was flying. This was the most beautiful, impactful experience that uh, one of them that I have had. And I realized then after a lot of encouragement from friends who I had shared some of my writings with that it would help other people too. And so I've aired my dirty spiritual laundry through my book about radical honesty called The Dance of Ego and Essence, Confessions of a Divine Diva. And certainly there's a companion journal to go with that too, Embrace Your Divine Inner Diva. So that was another healing experience that was so powerful. And I would like to just share a, uh, a little bit with you about um, what I wrote in my book and my journal on day 39. This was the next to the last day about love. It was on from animosity to unconditional love. We cannot genuinely love another unless we love ourselves. Unless we open our hearts and know our wholeness, we will not be able to let others close enough to know how oneness feels. When we finally open, we become vulnerable to potential pain of separation and rejection. This became truly clear as I help clients heal relationships and mend broken hearts we symbolically sewed fissures in the heart or closed cracks with crazy glue and laughter. We even used imaginary laser to heal damaged heart tissues. The results were all the same. Wounds from the past can only be transformed by divine love. The pain melts away and we are free to love again. I also learned through healings that relationships even the most positive and fulfilling ones are only a taste of what we truly desire and experience when we know oneness. Those who search for a partner and insist their soulmate is waiting for them often receive guidance that what they truly crave is union with God, source, or higher self. Obviously, Having a soulmate and a wonderful relationship with a husband or partner is an amazing gift. However, we can become sidetracked in the physical domain on our quest for the real thing. I learned from the blueprint and life experiences that divine love far exceeds physical attraction. When ego and all its insecurities fade into the background, essence expresses as love. It is so profound that what we sense on the outside no longer exists. We look with eyes of pure love and see the divine in the mirror and in others. Only then are our hearts open wide enough for love to pour forth and fill up the entire universe. So that was just a little taste of what I wrote on that one particular day. Well, I also had the opportunity to um, record meditations that came to me as part of this process. Every day after I wrote in my journal, I also received a meditation that I recorded and I had a chance to work with a friend from Naples. His name is Stu Shelton, and he's a gifted musician, a jazz musician and a new age musician. And he intuitively created music as I read the meditations. And so this is the meditation that accompanies that writing about unconditional love.
Day 39, Meditation. From animosity to unconditional love. Take a deep breath and exhale. Sink comfortably in your chair and feel yourself embraced by a loving presence. Allow my words about love to be those of your own. I am beloved and loving. I am essence expressing love. I am most grateful for gifts of love that I receive so generously from the universe, from source, and from others. For the ability to joyfully share my gifts of love with others, I am so grateful. I am deeply connected by love with all creation. I may never fully understand what love is because it takes so many forms. I feel love and compassion bubbling up from within and overflowing into the entire universe. I know that with one conscious act of kindness or one expression of love, I can transform the world. Instead of withholding love, I bring it forth and let it flow. I know that as I release positive energy, it multiplies. It expands exponentially, raising the consciousness of the world. I am an ambassador of love. I am love itself. As I look into my eyes and those of others, I see essence expressing as pure love. This is the truth of my being and your being. And so it is.
Well, in summary, I would just like to say is love is all there is. And when we discover our divine blueprint, we truly know that love is who we are or what we are. Love is why we are here. Love is how we relate with others. Love is part of our divine abundant inheritance. And it's how we heal. It's how we merge ego with essence. And so I'm going to stop sharing here and uh, bring Kathy back on. And if there's any time, I'd be delighted to answer any questions or provide more information. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing um, my any questions, but I am. I I did see. Um, I think someone was very surprised about your um, experience, your past lives, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all at the same time. So that must have been very disorienting, huh? Oh, it was. It blew me away. I walked around in a fog for quite some time, and I thought that I would have a great deal of difficulty trying to figure it out. But when I wrote everything down that I remembered. That helped tremendously. Of course, I have a rational, logical mind, and I already had a framework with the blueprint, so everything fits so beautifully. But each one of those people reflected a core shift in consciousness, which I thought was just perfect and critical for how we can live with greater harmony and how we can um, learn and grow. So I was very uh, excited about that. And someday I'll write the book, but it's it's taking time for it to really become well, a part of me. Well, this book is wonderful. If for anyone that's considering and on their journey, um, even Noel read it too, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I, think I even gave up uh, an acknowledgement for it. Yes, yes. Thank yes. You. It looks like Rashida <laughs> has her hand up. Let's see. Yes. Well, we have time just for one question because we're really out of time. Yes, oh, we are. Okay. Okay. I don't have a question, but I want to share something, Dr. Pamela. You know, I had been hurt a lot over 35 years. And I was really very angry, but I didn't know I was angry. I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. When my husband died, two months prior to his passing, I was nursing my daughter who was ill for several years and I didn't think there was any cure. And I was nursing my husband for the two months before he passed. I was nursing two people at the same time. I was trained as an RN. Then my husband passed and I started studying a few years later and never stopped. And I somehow began to find myself. I began to accept who I am. When I did that, I realized how many people loved me. How many people they were close to me who, who really cared. And then I began to accept other people. I began to see who they really are as people. I became more compassionate. And now I see people. I really see people. And when they suffer, I can feel they hurt. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I feel I feel it is a self-acceptance that comes first, it which does. shifts, which shifts mm -hmm. one's perspective. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank what it you. is a change in perspective, and that's the gift. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Pam, you. Dr. Pamela, Kathy, Thank Rashida. You thanks so for much. sharing your beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Let's